you have complete control over what you allow in your space. People often treat you the way you allow them to. If I was to ask us by a virtual show of hands, how many people have negative individuals or negative situations in their lives presently or have experienced it in the past, I would venture to guess that that would be a huge amount of us. Negativity is very endemic in our society today. And so in this video, I wanted to discuss the issue and present to you one or two ways of addressing the situation. As I always say, you cannot change individuals no matter how much you try to, but you can change or you can control the way you approach certain things in life, including negativity. Now, there are a lot of resources online and there is a lot of literature online that can help you through the journey of erasing negativity from your space. In this video, I will touch on some of the salient points and some of the more helpful practices that helped me understand what exactly negativity looks like to me and also how to address them. Now, in my opinion, negativity could mean different things to different people, but I think that we can all agree that there is an overarching definition of what that looks like. So a negative situation is one in which you feel less empowered. You don't feel encouraged. You don't feel uplifted. In fact, it's a situation where when you find yourself, you feel like a part of you gets chipped away every time you're exposed to that particular scenario or maybe that individual. Some traits of negative individuals include individuals who consistently, and the key word here is consistently, make you feel degraded. You know, they are very derogatory towards you. You're never yourself around them. They consistently make you feel like your best is not good enough. They're not encouraging. They are very jealous when you are successful and they diminish your efforts and they discount your achievements. Now there's a difference between constructive criticism and negativity. And I think in most situations, we can tell what the difference is. Someone who is offering constructive criticism adds value. You know, they don't just stop at the negatives. They try to help you by saying, well, have you thought about this approach to X, Y, Z? Or, you know, this is something that I think if you could work on, you would be fantastic at, you know, whatever it is. A negative individual, on the other hand, is someone who just struggles to see the good in you. They struggle to appreciate your successes. They struggle to compliment you. Everything you do is never good enough. And when you do something fantastic, they always try to one-up you. I'm sure we can all think of that one individual or friend, maybe in your past or your present, who struggles to show real joy when good things happen in your life or when you have great fantastic news they always find a way to discount it so let's say you just bought a new house or a new car or you know whatever they might say something like oh wow you know congratulations i'm not too sure about that neighborhood you know i think you could have done better but at least this is a start and you think to yourself you know what am i supposed to do with that information it's done. You know, I bought the house. I'm happy with it. As a friend, you should be happy for me. You're not the one who's going to live in the house. So yeah, maybe keep such opinions to yourself. But there is a fantastic passage in the Bible, beautiful proverb that talks about the heart. And it is Proverbs 4, 23. And it reads, depending on what version you look at, above all things, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Another version talks about, you know, it being the wellspring of life. Another version reads, guard your heart with all diligence for from it flow springs of life. And it's very interesting because it talks about above everything else. So it's saying everything I've said is all well and good, but this is the crux of the matter. Guard your heart against external shocks because out of it springs the matters of life. So what does it mean to guard your heart? Well, think about a security guard. He's never off duty. His responsibility is to be alert at all times to ensure that danger does not come to the environment or the individual that he or she is guarding. It means that we don't get time off from guarding and protecting what comes into our hearts. So I like to think of it as an electric fence around one's heart that really acts as a barricade to ensure that Every externality that comes into our hearts is filtered and it's for our own good. I often say to people, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. 
don't make excuses for their personalities, don't make excuses for the things they do and their actions. Every single one of us has to be accountable. And it's okay to drop friends and drop acquaintances as you go along in life. You don't fit into the clothes you did when you were nine. Well, I don't, maybe you do. But the point being that, you know, we evolve in life. We go through different stages in life and some of those baggages we leave behind. So it's not everyone who's going to be active and productive in your future. But this is work that you have to do. You've got to be responsible for thinking about what situations and people will be productive and positive in your future. Anything outside that you've got to leave behind and it's definitely okay to do that. The challenge with negative individuals, especially those who are bullies, is that if they know that their negative attitude affects you to such a significant degree, they'll never stop. They'll keep feeding off that energy and keep trying to discount you as an individual. And this sometimes can be a very difficult journey for certain people. I was extremely accommodative of negative individuals and negative situations. I just thought to myself, well, you know what, that's life. Perhaps out of this I'll grow. Um, perhaps the person will change over time, but I don't do that anymore. The longer you stay in an environment that is toxic or negative, the more it chips away at who you are, the authentic you, and the more you feel like a shadow of yourself. It's not worth it. You don't even recognize yourself. You don't have any strength left to fight. And this is why King Solomon writes in that proverb, you've got to be alert when it comes to the matters of the heart. You've got to be responsible and very protective for guarding your heart. Imagine an individual you know who's very strong on an average day, but they're heartbroken. You see that person fall to pieces and that is what negativity does and negative people try to do. They try to break you down so that you're always one step below them and they never encourage you to move forward to be progressive. Now there's a flip side to this which we often don't like to think about or don't like to talk about. We might actually be the source of negativity towards others. And I think that it's very honest to include this section in your personal evaluation every year. Sometimes it's not so obvious and oftentimes it's easier to see others as the problem and not ourselves. And more often than not, it is a very valuable exercise to undertake. What I like to do is reflect over the year, think about my relationships, think about times that I've perhaps hurt people and how I could have approached it better. If I need to pick up the phone and make another apology, I do exactly that. And I also help that individual understand, you know, this was my intention and this is how I handled it. I do apologize for hurting you. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to be encouraging. And this is how I intend to approach the situation if it ever came up in the future. This will undoubtedly help the individual feel better about themselves. It will also portray you as being a valuable and a quality individual who is in their lives to uplift them and not to bring them down and that you want to be part of their journey in a positive light and it might actually buy you future forgiveness if you ever repeated the same thing but caught yourself out very quickly and apologize so they'll know okay well we've had this conversation and this dialogue in the past and you're not trying to hurt me but you know it's something that you need to work on and one approach I also found helpful is asking myself oftentimes are the people around me, are my friends by default or design? So when you have friends by default, there's no filter. These individuals can come and go as they please. There's no structure around why you became friendly with them. But when you have friends by design, these are individuals that you've most likely vetted over time. You've become closer because you share the same values. You are perhaps, you know, of the same disposition in terms of your personality, your character, in terms of perhaps your upbringing, where you're from. Maybe you found that you have more in common with these individuals than those who are by default. Did I choose for them to come into my life? or was the relationship somehow foisted on me? Now there is an economic concept or a concept out there called the Pareto concept or efficiency. It basically presents a thesis or a theory that 80% of an outcome is caused by 20% of input. So I'm reading a book right now that talks about the fact that if you were to narrow things down, you would find that 80% of your unhappiness comes from 20% of the variables in your life. And how this applies to our lives is perhaps 80% of the negativity that you feel comes from 20% of the people or the situations in your life. Think about what individuals and what situations fall into that bracket. And I conduct this exercise as some sort of a personal audit or assessment of my life. So I like to think through every 
facet of my life, my financial well-being, my spiritual well-being, my social well-being, etc., etc., my mental well-being as well. So every year I conduct a cleansing of my physical space, my mental space. And I think that this exercise actually really helps because it helps you compartmentalize your life. I like to think about where I am, where I'm headed, where I've come from, i.e., you know, those who were or situations that were helpful in the past, but may not be part of my present and may not be part of my future. And this doesn't mean, by the way, that people can't change. Perhaps sometimes they need it to be highlighted to them. They might not be aware that this is a trait that they have, or this is a personality that is assumed about them by other people. They might apologize and say, well, I didn't realize that, you know, this is how you see me, or I didn't realize that my good intentions were coming off as negative. At other times, these individuals know precisely what they're doing, and they've chosen you because they think you're an easy target. As I said, said before, not everyone in your past is meant to be on a journey into your future with you. And it's up to you to determine who those individuals are that need to be out of your life as quickly as you can manage. And even the Bible says, to the best of your ability, try to get along with everyone, which means that it won't always happen. Not everyone who comes into your life has a spirit that meshes well with yours. And it's okay to say to yourself that, you know what, I'd rather not be exposed to this individual because we just don't mesh well together. You know, our spirits are not aligned. Now there is a concept in economics called dead weight loss. And it's essentially the cost of inefficiency. It's where demand and supply are not in tandem or equilibrium. And what I find is that this theorem actually applies to us as individuals. So there are so many of us who are carrying along with ourselves deadweight losses in way of friends, in way of memories, in way of experiences, in way of situations that we should have left behind a very long time ago. Now, sometimes it's very hard to do that, but you've got to take the step. And what you find is over time, it gets easier. Over time, it gets easier to say no to that situation that you know will bring you sadness. It becomes easier to say no to toxicity, but you must make the first step. And I remember in the beginning, I was very uncomfortable with this because I was a yes person. You know, I wanted to keep everyone happy. I wanted to ensure that, you know, I wasn't thought about as being an unfriendly or disagreeable individual, even that times that it was uncomfortable or inconvenient for myself until I realized that life does not have to be so and I can choose how I approach things. These same individuals that you are trying so hard to be perfect for or that you're trying so hard to keep happy, well, when they lay down at night to sleep, they're not thinking about you. They're not thinking about the effects of their words and their harshness towards you. Whereas you, on the other hand, are having sleepless nights you aren't able to function properly because of the effects on your heart of their negative comments or that bashful reaction they had to your good news. <sighs> At some point you realize it is just not worth it. These individuals themselves are not perfect and they are actually trying to figure out their lives. And so you're benchmarking your happiness or benchmarking your life against someone who doesn't even know whether they're coming or going. And although it took me a very long time to figure it out, I finally did. I'm not here to live my life for anyone else. You have complete control over what you allow in your space. People often treat you the way you allow them to. So if individuals start to understand that, you know what, she might have been a pushover in the past, he might have been very soft in the past, but now they've created boundaries, they start to respect those boundaries. Initially, it might be a bit of a struggle because they're not used to this new, strong individual who's able to hold your own and say, you know what, no, I'm not going to accept that, who is very intolerant of negativity in your space. But over time, they'll get used to it and they will act accordingly and they will fall in line. But I think it's absolutely imperative for you to perform your own personal audits, understand and gather information around those who are for you, understand those who are not for you and those who are just sort of in the middle or hangers on. And I think the beauty of life is that as we grow older, we realize that we spend a lot of time wasted on things that really don't matter in the grand scheme of our lives. So. When you were younger, you might worry about peer pressure or, you know, you might worry about, oh, what she would think if I said it in that way. Or you might worry about, you know, what he would say if I said no to his invitation. When you are much older and your priorities have evolved, you start to understand that 
majority of times the negativity we allow into our space is just not necessary it's not part of life it's not something we have to do we had choices all along perhaps they weren't so clear but as we move along in life and as we better ourselves and we surround ourselves with positive individuals with enriching enlightening empowering situations it becomes easier to just weed out the negative bad toxic side of our lives and progress with things that actually make our lives richer so i would encourage you to do a little assessment of your life what 20 percent of people in your life or situations in your life be that work be that your finances finances very important okay that could be causing a lot of your unhappiness an example would be figure out which debt in your life is positive and which debt in your life is negative so Positive debt could be your mortgage if you have an investment property. So you're paying out your interest and your capital repayment, but you are getting some income in. So net net, you are making money. Negative debt is things like credit cards. Buying that bank that you can't afford because you want to be like the Joneses. Anyway, I digress. The point being that I think it's important to, you know, conduct an assessment of your life. Figure out what the source of that 20% is that is causing 80% of the negativity in your life or 80% of your unhappiness and a way to work around it and how you intend to approach it going forward. So that's it for this video. I do hope it has been valuable in helping you identify what negativity is and where some of that might come from in your life and how to approach it going forward. If it has been helpful, do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already subscribed. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos. Until next time, look after yourselves. Bye for now.